protesters set fires, erected barricades, and even lay down in the road at intersections in central and eastern Baghdad as the work week began. The roadblocks created traffic jams across the capital, preventing people from getting to work. Some government offices and businesses were forced to close. We have one demand, which is employees join sit-ins just like us. They can participate by staying at home. We want all the government ministries to stop operating. We can all unite. We are all one people here. In Tahrir Square, which has become the epicenter of the protests, there were signs that people are settling in for the long haul. This burned out skyscraper has been occupied since the second wave of anti-government protests began more than a week ago. From the upper floors, protesters can see the square and the bridge below, leading to the green zone, where security forces are positioned. This was built during the Saddam Hussein era. There was once a Turkish restaurant on top, hence one of its nicknames. It has been abandoned since 2003 when it was bombed during the U.S.-led invasion. Now it's become an iconic landmark of these unprecedented protests. Volunteers are trying to prevent this building from becoming a garbage dump. We are here to clean this place and Al Tahrir Square. Uh, we know many people were killed here, uh, innocent people with no reason, so this place should be a clean. It's a kind of holy place. Mustafa Mousawi is a university student and volunteer. He says he knows being here is dangerous, but this is a revolution. What I'm going to do after graduation, there is no jobs. So this, is, this golden age is going like, uh, like this dust in the air. We are, we are just like dead people, zombies. No one, no, one, no, no one know that there is people here, have dreams, want to do things in their lives. Musawi and other protesters say they feel proud for their role in what they regard as a historic moment. They're not following or answering to anyone. In their eyes, they're all leaders. And Natasha is joining us live from Baghdad, Baghdad now. So what else did uh, the prime minister have to say today, Natasha? Elizabeth, this was the first time we'd heard from Prime Minister Adel Abdel Mehdi since it was announced on Thursday that he would be resigning. He made no mention of resigning. Instead, he said that the protests had, quote, achieved their goals, that it had forced the government to review its positions. There's a wide political movement and a lot of political decisions to be made. He is calling for an end to the bloodshed on both sides. He mentioned that, quote, criminals are hiding among the protesters, attacking security forces. He also said that there is going to be an investigation into, quote, the equipment that security forces are using. This is likely an allusion to the Amnesty International report that says um, security forces here in Baghdad have been using, quote, military-grade tear gas grenades intended to kill, not disperse, protesters. He also said that there must be an end to the disruption of daily life, some of which you saw in my story earlier. Schools have been closed. People have been unable to get to businesses. The port in Basra, as you mentioned, has been uh, has had its operations halted. And Mehdi is saying that any disruption to the oil fields or the ports are only going to cost billions of dollars in losses and create a delay in the distribution of goods to Iraqis. He added that as a result of these protests already, the approval of the 2020 budget has been delayed. All right, Natasha, thank you for that. For now, that's Natasha Ghanem for the latest live in Baghdad. Thank you.